operator in our country. No one has to be a victim. I'm for putting our health care in our hands and not in the hands of some bureaucrat. And, and for balancing our budget. And for a fair taxation system that allows us to get rid of the IRS. And, and, and for a strong military. Wasn't it wonderful seeing those cadets from the Citadel? And, and for taking care of our veterans the way they should be taken care of. And for honesty and integrity and common sense and courage, because courage is what we really need. We don't, we, we shouldn't submit to the PC police and to people who are trying to control us by intimidation and by IRS audits and by messing with your job. You know, the only reason they can do that is because we sit silently by. That's what they want us to do. We have to stop sitting silently by and express ourselves. You know, like in the pre-revolutionary days, our ancestors, they got together, they talked about what kind of country did they want, what were they willing to fight for, and they did fight for it. We have to be willing to fight for it. The baton is now in our hands. We need to talk to our uncle who hasn't voted in 20 years. Go to your grandmother who's an inv invalid and uh, make sure she has an absentee ballot. Help her fill it out. The baton is ours. Freedom is not free. It must be fought for. And remember, we live in the land of the free and the home of the brave, but you can not be free if you're not brave. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I think, uh, I think we're going to have, for the first time at CPAC, we're going to have a little Q&A. So yes. where's the Q? The I'm, I'm here, Dr. Carson. Okay. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Um, please behave for me. This is okay. my first time doing this. Um, we are, actually have conservatives all across the country via Twitter sending uh, questions for you to answer. And as you all know, it's, it's a different format this year, so anyone that the media perceives as a presidential candidate will be subjected to these same questions and answers. No problem. So, great. So let's start with the first question. And um, the question is, what is your specific plan for national security and managing the threat against ISIS? Okay. Well, the key thing is concepts. You have to recognize that if I decide to run and if I were in the office of president, um, you have to say those things. Uh, I, I would recognize that there is a role for the Commander-in-Chief and his staff, and that is to define the mission. What is the mission? The mission is recognizing that we have radical Islamic terrorist groups that are in their adolescent stage that wish to destroy us. And we have two choices. We can wait and see what they're going to do and react to it, or we can destroy them first. And what I would... I, the mission that I would give our military is to destroy them first, and I wouldn't tie their hands and let them get it done. Are you ready for the second I, I'm question? Ready. Okay, that was good. Um, the second question is How do you plan to restore Amer the American dream and make us feel more united and less um, divided? Well, first of all, I think the bully pulpit and the position of the presidency is very, very important because it sets the tone. And, you know, we have a nation now where we have people in the highest levels who exacerbate the division. You know, they've created a war on women race wars, income wars, age wars, religious wars, you name it, there's a war on it. The real enemies in our country are the people who are the purveyors of division, no matter where they are. And I think, 
I think we have to call them out on that and recognize when we say a nation with liberty and justice for all, all means all. That means everybody. It means we don't pick and choose the laws that we want to enforce. We don't pick and choose the people that we want to favor. Everybody gets treated the same. And when our policies are that way, and when our leadership begins to talk that way, I think it will make a dramatic difference for our nation. Thank you, thank you. We're moving right along here, you're good. Um, so the next question is a simple one, but a complicated one and an important one. Um, how do you feel about Common Core? Well, I think, as I mentioned before, education is the great divide in our country. It doesn't matter what your ethnic background or any other background, you get a good education, you write your own ticket. Now, the best education is the education that is closest to home. And I've found that, for instance, homeschoolers do the best, private schoolers next best, charter schoolers next best, and public schoolers worse. So that's why we need school choice. Common Core is not school choice. I do believe in standards, but those standards obviously are set by parents and people who do homeschooling or they wouldn't be doing so well. Those standards obviously are set in our private schools and our public schools need to learn how to compete with that, but they don't need some central government tell them how to do it. Okay, this is going to be the last question. Um, just because your answers are so um, succinct and concise, um, and I'm we a appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the last question is How do you plan to bring your message to the minority community and make them feel more um, included? And also, how do you um, plan on making them um, feel inclusive? I think the key is to tell them the truth. You know, no more of this hiding what's going on. And uh, to see, what I want people to have is real freedom and to, and to have real prosperity. And, you know, I hear some people saying, well, Carson, when he was a kid, you know, you know he benefited from welfare and all this stuff, so, and now he wants to get rid of it. I'm not interested in getting rid of the safety net. I'm really interested in getting rid of dependency. And I want us to find a way to allow people to excel in our society. And as more and more people hear that message, they will recognize who is truly on their side and who is trying to keep them suppressed and cultivate their votes. <laughs> thank you. Dr. Carson, we really thank you for your remarks this morning, and good luck to you. Thank you.